You said in your bio that as a child you uh, would draw daily and stuff like that. Um, maybe, um, how did you get involved with graffiti writing and more importantly, for an artist, an adult artist, is it important to retain some of the childhood excitement about dry, uh, being creative in that or is it something you leave behind? Totally. I always try my best and keep my childhood imagination on because I think that's it's the most like the most important thing that the child brings to to a you know a growing up man or, or, or girl and I think especially like in your, when you're growing up there's so much that happens and and you and you live your life like without any fear and uh, do you have those dreams to oh what's gonna be for when for me when I turn like 30 or 20 and you just keep dreaming keep dreaming keep dreaming so many possibilities and and at the end, you, sometimes you not even end up doing what you dream about it. You just do something else. And for me, it was kind of like this, because I had so many dreams, and uh, like not just like as I want to be when I grow up, but uh, it's in general what I want to my family, what I want to see for the, the the future of my neighborhood, what I want to see for for my sister. You know, like just not just me, but around me, that. I think everything it kind of like brings together in my art. Nice. Uh, and Shalak, what about you? How did you get involved? And, and if you want to comment on that idea of, of bringing uh, those feelings into your adult life too, or if you just want to discuss how you got involved with the graffiti writing. Um, so I've been, yeah, drawing and painting since I was little. I was really motivated and uh, pushed by our mom that was always putting us in different classes and stuff. So. It was always just part of our life and she also, she's a scientist, uh, but she also painted as well. My grandma would kind of doodle and, and always create around creative people and it was kind of part of our culture as well. So my parents are from Chile and I feel like there everybody has a kind of creative outlet. It's just part of life um, and it's not necessarily like I'm an artist, it's just we have our creative times and expressions. So um, it kind of came naturally and it just grew and grew uh, in that way and I think that when I'm painting and I reach that like true spot of like creation when you're like just really into it um, and your mind kind of goes blank and you're just playing and it's just like a very uh, simple times so that's kind of like when you're playing when you're little and nothing else you're just like in your bubble so for me it, that's kind of the way that I go back to my childhood in that pure spot mm. is uh, is when I get really into it and I'm not thinking or worried about is it gonna be like this is it gonna be like that but you're just like in creation yes uh, that imagination world that Bruno was talking about so uh, for graffiti I started getting into kind of the hip hop scene when I moved to Montreal um, when I decided I wanted to go study art in Concordia but I had a lot of friends who were like MCs, DJs, breakdancing and graffiti artists um, so we were kind of like within that bubble, that culture, like living it um, and I was doing art but I wasn't uh, really in the graffiti culture I had my buddies who were but it was really difficult to like oh I want to go and check it out but it wasn't really invited to go and I think the main thing was there because I'm a woman because I know that if I was a guy it would be more natural like yeah okay let's go grab some cans and go and this was like in the 2000s early 2000s and when I went to go I went to Brazil for a couple of years and I lived there and I worked with an NGO called Afro Reggae mm. um, social work has always been part of kind of my work and my values so um, when I did this, I met an artist who was a graffiti artist. He was doing graffiti workshops in the favela. And when I told him, oh, I'm really interested, I've always wanted to go out. And he's like, well, then let's go out. What's the big deal? And that's when I, in 2005, when I went out for the first time, not just like tagging or because I had done different stuff like just for fun. But uh, it was the first time that I was like, OK, I'm going to the street to do a piece. And then I did a piece. And then after that, I kind of lost fear and felt like, oh, I don't have to ask for permission for anybody, it's just you go and do it. So when I got back to Montreal, where I was based out of, um, I just started going to the streets and doing my thing and uh, just went from there. Hmm. 
when did uh, both of you, uh, you can answer separately, of course, uh, when did you get involved with, say, galleries and when did you um, come off the street and go into galleries? And also, is there, um, when you answer that question, is there a conflict between the street and galleries? Is there a problem? doing stuff on canvas as opposed to that, or is it a different vibe when you do it, or, and so maybe one at a time if you want to answer that? Yeah, I can answer that. Depending where it is, I think, and I think that the galleries, they're so much open now than the before, because usually it's just all more like, a, you know, uh, more fancy, more uh, traditional art, and now they're, they're approaching more of the street art, because uh, a lot of uh, gallery people are going to the street art as well, so it's kind of like a back ex exchange actually. It's not just the, the street art going to the gallery, the graffiti itself. It's the gallery going to the, the, the walls. So I think some places there are a lot of conflict, but uh, in South America I start, I start to do gallery stuff like canvas and showing together with the collective. In, like I, I did my first collective show in a gallery painting canvas was in 2006 and then after that I was just like in galleries every year I had a, like two or three shows but was all majority all collective shows it's like you know always like ONG, NOJ, NOJ, NGOs, NGOs and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that that putting up together artists local artists to to gather the community and make something happened for them mm. so it was always, always part of, of those pro programs and uh, close to my neighborhood we had a this huge uh, it's like graffiti gallery here it's mm -hmm. like a big building where everything happens with the community they had a, like a studio to record mm. like a gallery to exhibit the pieces and we were always there and this helped a lot to grow all that in my neighborhood and after that I went to, to Rio so there in 2007 was when I did a lot of shows collective as well and then on 2010 I did my first solo show which was like a graffiti gallery but uh, like a, a graffiti shop who sells spray, spray can mm -hmm. uh, 9-4 MTN Montana 94. Mm -hmm. So I did my solo show, my first one, and it was very special because I got the chance to invite her to the mm -hmm. show. So it was like in the same week that I, I met Chalak, so it was oh. pretty special. Not just for my first solo show, that I was pretty like, I wasn't happy either, but at the same time I was happy because something else was happening in my, my life, you know. So yeah. It was pretty special and important day. Show. Yeah, but like all the pieces was kind of like, ah, oh, I could do better, but you know, it's just a process in the arts, artist uh, life that you just keep growing, growing, and you're never satisfied, I guess. That totally. happens with me a lot too. Yes, totally. And you? So what was the initial question again? The, just, um, you know... Um, uh, the relationship between the galleries and... Yeah, like the relationship between, do you find a different vibe to yeah. go out on the street or a wall as opposed to doing cameras for a gallery? Yeah. And when did you yourself get involved with gallery shows? So, um, yeah, I, I got involved with uh, gallery shows for probably like early 2000s because uh, I went to Concordia, so we always had uh, like... Uh, a show here, a show here, small, 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 like uh, group shows as well. And then 2007 was the year I had already graduated school, I had quit art and then gone back to art. And uh, when I went back to art, I decided to move back to Montreal. I had been in South America for a while. And I said, I'm going to move back to Canada because I know I can do a part time job, work three days a week, and dedicate myself completely to my art. So um, that was a chance that we had in Canada at that time, like you can really make it work. So I did that and I did my first solo show in 2006 or 2007, I think it was, in Montreal, which was really uh, an important time for myself as well, just to like gather up all your pieces and um, have kind of that one voice mm -hmm. and everything kind of relating to it itself. And it was exciting to share that. So. And it's important as an artist, because like, I've done a show here myself, a few shows at Graffiti. Uh, I'm not a graffiti artist, but I'm a, a painter. Um, it's hard, like as you said, uh, smoky, 
it's it's hard to pick the right works for your first show, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, it's yeah. not. It's a good way to test yourself. I think yeah. there is never right and never ready for it, and then you just gotta do it. So you do anyway. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, now. Um, uh, both of you on your bios have a list of a lot of countries that you've gone around the world to to do graffiti and could create in and meet other artists and stuff. Mm -hmm. How would you say that has affected your work and also your worldview of, of where graffiti stands in the world at this time? Uh, I think massively. Um, I think it goes so much with our approach as well. Uh, every place has a unique voice and uh, it's so interesting to see how different countries and different cultures have kind of adopted hip-hop culture or painting and made it their own. And um, going to different places around the world, in South America, in Europe, I've been to Africa, in the Middle East, um, just, you know, it's a reflection of another culture, but you're really seeing it with yourself, so you get to learn a lot about yourself as well. Um, for me, I came out of all those experiences super uh, inspired and I think uh, we have a collective called the Essencia Arts Collective as well and I think those trips really were a big part of the Essencia Arts Collective because we wanted to kind of gather this knowledge that people who were working kind of in communities but also through the arts so like in, uh, uh, motivating empowering their communities through the arts so that was like a way because we had met so many inspiring leaders uh, who were artists either MCs, uh, graffiti artists, all of different kind of photographers and we wanted to really gather those amazing people in, in festivals and that's when we started doing festivals in 2010 as well that became a nomadic festival. The first one was in Montreal, then we went to Brazil, Venezuela, and then Senegal. In Senegal and uh, Toronto. So it's kind of a way that we could create our own school of like exchanging ideas and approaches. And I think that's one of the most enriching experiences for me. Um, definitely learning from the way that other people have done for themselves in their communities. So yeah, well, like she was saying, that uh, this is a, a travel. Be able to travel with your art is just already it's a, it's just a blast, and uh, be able to exchange with artists and with the communities that we also came from those kind of communities which is the one that we like to go, like a poor community where you don't have a, so much access to art. Not always like that, but once you have opportunity with the Essence Art Collective that we did so many, we, we like to, to, to really like get to know the, the, the culture and, the, and sometimes the culture is very similar with the, with the ones that we, we, we came from that we pretty much like feel so much like a home and and we get so much along with uh, the whole community and the artists and the people and the youth and it's it's pretty amazing how how the whole world the whole world got to to know the same thing work with the same tools pretty much at the same time and it's doing like some a lot of a lot of artists are doing social work which is the one that i think is the most important that you can be able to like bring something good for your community or your school, whatever area you work, your approach, you know. And uh, yeah, it's being able to travel doing that. It's just, uh, it's so amazing. We really enjoy it. Uh, maybe you've mentioned the uh, Sense, Essencia Collective. Essencia? Mm -hmm. uh, what about, uh, maybe can you each talk a bit about the clandestinos? Yeah. That's what, what is that all about? Clandestinos, it's uh, the word clandestinos, it's, uh, you know, it's clandestine in English and uh, some translations are good, some translations are kind of like, oh, okay, clandestine. But uh, the, the, the reason of a clandestinos for us, it's uh, breaking the boundaries and uh, the frontiers that we have in countries, which happened with me trying to come to Canada. Mm. And I tried many times to come here and my visa was a void mm. for many times and uh, we had to go for another process, uh, do the paperwork and all that, but this comes to like, a, a huge background of, of our relationship and like coming up with this meaning of the word, which is uh, pretty much like breaking all the, all the, the you know, 
The boundaries. The boundaries. Mm. And, uh, that's that's the name of it. And be kind of like a nomad and try to be able to be everywhere without needing a passport or a visa or anything. Mm. Our art does that. So mm. it's pretty much like bringing the art everywhere without having a passport or a, you know, a name for it. Mm. It's like a public and word-wise colorful meaning, meaning to, to be around, you know. Mm. So that's... In, in, the, in it. its own sense, it's, it is our passport, like Clandestinos has become our passport to be able to exactly. go to different places, even uh, places that you wouldn't be able to go if you weren't doing graffiti, like uh, favelas, for example, in Brazil, there was a lot of places that just not an ordinary person could go, but because you were going for a project, visual project, social project, Everybody welcomed you. Mm. That was like they gave the so community, much support. but yeah, everybody welcomed you. So, and you get to see so many, uh, such a different reality because of that. Mm. Um, kind of like a behind the scenes. Mm. Thing. Yeah, the so, behind the scenes is the best, I think. Yeah, because you get to really live your life in a in a like. Sometimes you are in those random spots. Sometimes you are like having anybody around you. And sometimes you have so much people trying to interact with you, plus you gotta do the work. It's kind of like, oh, you gotta manage your, yourself to just <laughs> like be able to connect with everything around you. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a privilege to be able to do that because, for example, one day we'll be in a fancy hotel and the next day we'll be like... Somebody's couch. Where, yeah, somebody's yeah. couch. And <laughs> it's really nice to be able to transmit ideas and dialogue if it's through our art or through meeting people. And right be able to cross those boundaries, no matter if it's class, race, but like location, uh, culture. Right. Um, so it's really As long as we have a material to express ourselves and a bed to lay down and mm. some food to put in the valley, a local food for sure, mm. it's all good for us. He has to be fed well or else. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, there's so much places that we still got to go to. Mm. I feel like oh, we just we just went to that little of the world to, mm -hmm. to see it. Mm -hmm. um, There's so much places to travel. Yeah. In your bio, uh, uh, Shalak, you said uh, yeah, there's an importance of workshops, and uh, but I'd like to both you address this issue too, and maybe you could you know describe the wor importance of workshops. But the idea that um, you would introduce youth to refixing up their neighborhood in a beautiful way with graffiti, which is also a cutting edge art form that is tied to things that young people love, like hip hop and break dancing and all that stuff. I mean, it sounds like the perfect formula for getting people to care about their neighborhoods and stuff, right? Definitely. And I'm just was wondering if you guys could both mention that, like the importance of, of youth discovering it and, and how you've helped that and through your workshops and stuff too. Yeah, so um, I think I've seen it with my own eyes how, in my own life, first of all, of how graffiti has empowered me as a person. Uh, you, I used to call it graffiti and now it's called street art and then it goes to muralism so there's so many labels to it but it's really that pure expression mm. and putting it out on the street um, so how it's empowered me in my own life and then seeing youth that I've worked with uh, usually now what we do is like we do quick workshops so like one week one month um, but I used to in Montreal work at La Maison des Jeunes so a, a youth organization that's really kind of like the graffiti art programming, uh, but it was a youth drop-in center and I started a graffiti program there. And I worked with the same youth in like throughout three years and I'm still in touch with them. And I got to see youth be so empowered, um, coming to the workshops, creating their paintings and we did exhibits together and then having those kids sell their work mm -hmm. and be able to buy their own winter boots when they couldn't afford their winter boots or to be able to express themselves about what their neighborhood meant to them and just seeing them glow in that way and growing um, like I'm 100% convinced that I know that art moves like souls and um, and people who wouldn't be heard otherwise have a voice yes so it's so important to not only um, speak for others but give them the tool of the voice you know what I mean so like through our work we try to speak about the environment, about different social issues that are happening in our surroundings, but I think it's also important to inspire and give that tool to youth, especially because there's so much yeah. life to come and they're, they're the future. Mm -hmm. 
well for me basically it's the same thing but in my case it was kind of like well it's, I we in my neighborhood where I grew up it was always I was always chasing something to do and uh, the majority was all like getting getting money to buy a motorcycle to be a like a pizza delivery man to be a like a like a gangsta, you know, it's always like those dreams that don't take you anywhere. Mm. And uh, the graffiti itself, I saw when I was so young because the graffiti scene in Brazil was pretty huge and old. So you, you could see graffiti anywhere and like back in the 90s, 80s already. Mm. And uh, when I was young, I saw so many of uh, Jamios, those guys, those classic dudes. and. Uh, the pichação, which is a kind of uh, ta tagging from Brazil, that brought so much inspiration to me back in when I started, and uh, even before, because I had a cousin who did a lot of pichação, and he was always like mixing colors and like stealing paints from the neighbors, like, you know, like hustle to have a that little equipment for him to go out and, and do something, and I was always around and seeing what he was doing, plus doing my own thing which was like biking and like just wondering what I'm gonna do with my life and always having there and with the skills of drawing so it was always like a, a, a tool that I had there forever yeah. but I never touched since 2004 mm. so in 2004 I, I really started I got everything like acrylic uh, a lot of uh, chalk and uh, those uh, crayons with uh, what what's called that uh, pastel resin that is like a you know the, oh, the candles wax. Mm, mm. I I did a bunch of like wax, just chalks with the wax and pigments. So I was just going out with that because uh, uh, wax we could find on the on the cemeteries. Mm. So we we usually we used to go on the cemeteries and get all the candles. Oh right. And then get all the candles and and like you know the melt them, make a huge fire on my, my dad's garden and he was always pissed because the <laughs> smell of it and like oh, I had to take your shoes because you were in the cemetery. So it's all like a whole belief behind and then a lot of pigments make all the colors like those nasty chalks and going everywhere doing my name and that was the beginning of it. and mm -hmm. then after all it was just like see people doing those workshops in the neighborhood in my neighborhood that I told you like the the space that they have there called Criança Esperança mm. it's like a government thing but runs like totally not government NGO. because NGO all the money they take for themselves and mm. kind of like oh okay let's work with the youth with uh, whatever we have left mm. so it's very basic mm. but at the same time all those um, the the teachers there like the people who were volunteered in time and the mm -hmm. work they were get paid very little mm. but they still they were doing a great job with us in like teaching first thing before you get a spray can or, or go do something try to have a meaning for mm. it you know so that was always the main thing it's like instead of being like in a corner selling drugs or going to the Bailey Funky which is like just to go party and mm. like you know get girls and get drunk and high mm. so let's do something creative with yourself so always going to that place helped me a lot mm. and uh, having people around me always like trying to make me live my life better and having my family tell me oh this dude is not gonna live until like the 25 he's not gonna make it mm. to the 25 mm. and I did it so mm. now I'm almost 30 and doing what I love so I think uh, uh, communities workshops it's really important yeah. so since uh, I moved to Rio I was doing a lot of more because there was a, this huge hungry of uh, learning mm. in communities so I gather with a couple communities, uh, uh, like youth center like this, and I was doing every day, every weekend, doing workshops, and uh, I was like really working really hard with workshops. I worked for like three years or four, mm. straight with the uh, plus my my individual work, but a lot of in communities. You were giving workshops, yeah. and then I got to see some like really, really, really amazing places where like you you cannot see 
uh, amazingness, mm. but you see through the, the people values and, and patient to do something, you know, like you go to those favelas and you see like they don't have a tap water filtered. Mm -hmm. they, they have a, like a pipe or pipes with uh, like, you know, all the, the, the drain, like the yeah. masters and everything just straight up like on the sun heating and people just happy. Maybe you could start off by, uh, by talking a bit about your uh, psychedelic magical realism and your animal sp use of animal spirits and then maybe that can segue into both of you talking about what you're doing here for the Graffiti Gallery exhibition. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I've been doing uh, the kind of animal spirits for about three or four years specifically uh, and they just keep growing and changing and metamorphosizing but um, yeah they kind of, I started with one or two and then they became these kind of, these beings on their own. And I feel like, like they have these powerful voices. So I really love to leave them uh, in the cities around, kind mm. of as a reminder of uh, nature. And also I, I paint a lot of uh, animals that are going extinct, um, endangered, and sadly enough, there's like a huge list of them around the world so there's a lot of different animals to paint um, and I don't do like most of the time I don't do a literal translation of the animals I do them more like a spirit animal so the colors and um, and more I don't know how I would describe it but they're kind of a magical being kind of coming from a different world and as reminders like these they're the opposite of what a shadow would be, but kind of leaving their imprint. Hmm. And could you guys then each talk a bit about what you feel you're doing here at the Graffiti Gallery in Winnipeg? Well, I can talk about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we kind of we kind of saw the space and we were just like amazed by the by the spot and how much potential it has, right? So we were we were thinking and uh, we kind of like come up with this concept that we, we are showing you right now, pretty easy. And not easy, but like sitting there in the couch and just like looking at the walls and the four, the three surfaces that we had, we kind of come out with a landscape where the landscape ends on the edge on the on the sides and it's like an edge of a of a uh, a cliff, so it can be floating on the on the sky or it can be just a, a piece of land that is left on the word in the word, so. And then inside, the, like on top of this land, it's happening. It's, there's a little story that you gotta go through, and uh, there's nature. A lot of nature is still trying to survive into this whole chaotic uh, cycle of uh, a human being, the earth that we always try to put it, and like the the impact that we do with the earth, using all the resources, trying to like just making money out of it, and never think about the future. So. Our piece, our main focus on this piece is kind of like, like a wake up, awakening, you know, mm. and uh, through the, through the imagination word as well, mm. not just very like pointy. Mm. I feel like it's almost natural to our work. It's like an extension, a line from what we do on the street um, that we do on our canvases. Canvas, everything. Um, so the theme is all always kind of there. And the show is called Merging, so it's about so many different levels of merging, but like merging nature, the pollution coming in, the urban, um, us merging together as artists, coming from different places, coming to Winnipeg and doing this. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be really exciting. We're fil finalizing now the little details. But and the space really helps a lot with that great space that you guys have, it's just like so glad to be doing something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just comes natural, I think. Yeah. Well, and appropriately at the end of the interview, it's um, what I, my impression of it when I saw it was as like a fairy tale almost. Mm -hmm. There's a fairy tale feels because, you know, the first question was about the childhood mm -hmm. drawing in that. Yeah. And so it's, again, maybe you've answered it by what you've done here, sort of an adult fairy tale. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of, we kind of say like we're visual storytellers, but we describe this. Uh, this piece and installation kind of like a dream yeah. so it's like a lucid dream where you're walking through and it's almost like you see these terrible things happening but you're floating and there's the good and the bad with a lot of chapters yeah, uh -huh. totally. yeah. and there's like that that fight between mm. the two 
And you'll, you'll also see those themes repeated in the canvases, but a little bit different. With the, uh, within another perspective as well. Mm -hmm. It's not so much like, like Going what we, what, all we painted was very like graffiti and springy style. And which is the canvas is very like a brush and more, more delicate, you know. So some of them will be, some of the canvases will be just spray paint and mm. some of them are all brush. Mm. So. Yeah. so it kind of shows our mixed media mm. style. We'll also have prints that showing some of our work on the street and other canvases. Illustrations on Illustrations. computers and like by hand. Yeah. It's very, uh, it's very solid, I think. <laughs> we are glad to be able to do a, a second show like this. And because we just did one in London like a couple of months back and uh, be able to do something like this going over on the walls and kind of creating this whole ambient yeah. mm -hmm. that's the for us was a dream so mm. we were always like trying to do something like that and but to this, have like a week to just focus mm -hmm. on the installation is really so that's important right. yeah like just focus on the whole story and creating mm. this world yeah. so that people can kind of come in and not just see the canvas as like a piece of artwork but as part of an extension, as part of our world, and what does this canvas relate to that? And it kind of gives the whole background. Mm. That's why it comes so natural because we barely thought about the pieces itself, like the canvas, to go to the wall and do. We kind of like, oh, which one looks better? We we also we set up all the canvas first on the wall, and just by the sizes and the colors, we we kind of thought about like, oh, this goes good here and that one goes good there but not thinking about the concept on the wall mm -hmm. so after we painted the putting the canvas just matches it up perfectly mm -hmm. i guess because our team is always like towards the like you know the the consciousness yeah. sometimes the subconscious does a lot more work than we think yeah too, oh, so. for sure. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks so much yeah